make sure y'all share that. share the live, man. Comment below. Will. Where you at, Will? There we go. Hey. How you doing, man? I'm good. I thought we were just going to have a normal phone call. Huh. I was expecting a normal phone call. I wasn't expecting it live. One second. Everybody, make sure you guys follow Will. Follow Will. Thank you very much. Will is a life coach. If you guys need advice from Will, Will is that guy. If you need somebody to talk to, if you second guessing yourself in life, Will is that guy. I'm telling you guys, foreign trip is putting you on to somebody that you guys need in your life. You need, you need somebody who will keep it a hundred thousand. Some people are too scared to see the truth. <laughs> yeah. People don't like being questioned. Thank you, I appreciate that. I wasn't ready for this. How's things? What have you been up to? All right, so things have been going good ever since I got off tour. You know what I'm saying? With check and stuff like that, I've been being more productive. You know what I'm saying? I'm yep. still doing what I got to do as an artist, as an influencer, digital marketer. I'm going, meeting new people, networking, building my net worth, making sure my mental health is good, eating right, drinking water, staying out the mix, staying out the drama, and just focusing on what I got to do in life. Ever since we talked last time, my mind's been, my mind's been better now. You feel me? Amazing. Amazing. Yes. There's seven seven ingredients, if you like, to really good mental health, and I think you just listed right. them all. You know the the you know the water, the the food, the sleep, the company we keep, making sure we're outside in nature, exercise, having some self time, me time to focus on yourself as well as interact with other people and the right people. There's that that famous saying: we are the five people we spend the most time with. Um, and so actually we can choose those people um, but ultimately if we are if we let go of everything sometimes we can hold on to things situations people etc because sometimes if we're struggling to let go it might mean because we're holding on too tightly well why are we holding on too tightly because actually it's not meant for us right let it go and any people and situations that are meant for us will either come back or remain um, and it shouldn't be difficult. And so where you've had a, a change of, of your mindset and now kind of invested further into your mental health, knowing that those ingredients, as you list them, uh, right. benefit you and benefit you. It doesn't matter if they benefit anybody else. They have benefited you. And you're recognizing that not only in this moment, but as you've traveled along that journey, it's really, really important to do so. So I'm right. really pleased to, to hear you say that and that smile on your face as you said it. Um, you know what I mean? I got to, I got to say it. <laughs> I got to. But, like, I just recently got this tattoo, right? This tattoo means I mentally broken. I saw that. I saw that right. last time. So I, I recovered from being mentally broken. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now that I kind of got out of that um, brokenness, I had to get it as a reward for myself to remember not to go back to get mentally broken. Life got me. So now I'm on the right path right now. I'm staying focused on the journey that I need to stay focused on. People that don't need to be in my circle do not need to associate with me. I should not associate with them and they should not be in my circle because therefore they're holding me back and then I'm holding myself back, allowing that person or people to be inside my circle. I'm hanging out by myself. Absolutely. Right and I'm, I'm just chilling by myself. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, is it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. We just not aligned at this time you might be later on you might have been before right. but knowing that actually you got it right you would make yourself hold yourself back it's always really important for me to get people to know that you're in control of that because if other people hold you back that means you're not in control exactly but if you allow them to hold you back that means you can stop that and you're still in control and notice that actually yeah we can situations that aren't so great for us we can get mixed up in all of that and then spend too much time there too much energy too much right. effort if you like and not not move forward i mean ultimately we're in that situation here where i said when are you free and you said right now and i'm like let's go and you, you're you feel me? something else <laughs> even though it took me a little time it's because i was doing a little networking with my homies and stuff like that and, 
Yeah. So just just when you say right now, say ten minutes, it's all good. I'm all good. Right now is right now for me. I'm right. in the UK. It's coming to the end of the day. <laughs> what time is it over there for you guys right now? It's all, I mean, almost nine p.m. Ooh, but you know, three fifty. It's, it's, 3.53 yeah. p.m. right now. Everybody in the right? comments, comment below what time it is for you guys. If you guys need somebody to talk to mental health-wise, uh, advice just on life, Will is that guy. I'm telling you guys, Will is that guy. Thank you. And I mean, as you and I interact, we, we haven't had that many interactions. And as right. you and I interact, we learn and we develop our relationship the more we interact with each other. And ultimately, in, in normal rela or any relationship, we usually mold that relationship when stuff goes wrong or we don't agree and what happens Steve? whatever but no, i was trying to get your us. number down but instagram has shut me down so i was like dang the moment i was trying to cop his uh his uh his whatsapp and they took means, me down so you I weren't ready you back. weren't ready you weren't in that place at that moment but now you are now you are how was how was it on tour it was good like i learned a lot of stuff and you know what i'm saying i i keep fast pace on everything so like my boy yeah. Check, he made sure that uh, I stay focused on the journey. So, like, when we're on the move, we got to move accordingly, professionally. You know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. bring people that's not doing what we're doing because they're a distraction. You know what I'm saying? The people that's just inside the tour, let it just be that we vibe, we do content, and just keep yep. escalating and keep each other up. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm guessing your <coughs> line of business is you get a lot of people that, well, fans, I guess, and people right. that would Since four, I've made like 20 songs. I've did two interviews. I've networked with over 40, 50 people in a matter of a month and two weeks. Yeah. And ever since and, I got off tour, I'm still creating songs, checking up and, on myself. And it could be easy them. to get into prolonged situations conversations etc with each and every one of those people but of course as you travel in your journey to your destination and the one after that and the one after that and the one after that those people can right. be traveling companions for a short space of time no time at all or for a prolonged period of time it all depends on the, their purpose along your journey exactly because as traveling companions they're meant to be, well, I wrote this, oh, I think if I can read it to you. Actually, this will be really relevant. I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to Go put it up on my page. I'm just going to um, show the fans of this. I achieved a goal in my life on YouTube. I was just at 1,000 in um, September. I just hit 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. I hit 1,000 subscribers overnight. So I appreciate everybody that's subbing to my YouTube channel. We're almost at 4,000. We have five. We have 6 million views in 30 days. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. Amazing. Keep, keep subscribing. Congratulations. I could do some help with that if you want to give me some advice. I'll give you some advice. You can give me some advice on that. Oh, yeah, I got you. What, I, what I'm going to do now, too, is I got people, right? Um, They screen record our um people's lives. So, like, say, like, right now, if me and you are live and we're talking mm. about what we're talking about, I'm going to tag you and I'm going to have them tag me so that way you're still being put out there promoting yourself mm -hmm. your brand and what you got your message and stuff like that so you're you know what i'm saying you could, you could have me as a collaborator if you want and i'll post on my page it's up to you right whatever i appreciate each everything anyway when we need them but only when we're ready for them we can notice the signs that the universe wants us to notice the signs were there before are here now and will always be and we ready when and we notice when we notice because we're ready to notice and accept the signs that take us on the road to the destination meant for us notice when we're on the wrong road the wrong path to the wrong destination. Signs can be confusing, feel negative, and mainly misunderstood. They lead to dead ends, traffic jams, and sometimes accidents. The right road to the right destination contains signs too. The journey can be easy sometimes and sometimes not. But we notice when we notice signs are there to guide us. We just have to look for them and notice. It's important to notice that passengers on our journey will often notice before we do if we're about to take the wrong road and give us notice as they do just right. notice those passengers trying to divert us off course cover our eyes grab the wheel or demand to drive and notice those passengers are not passengers at all and could be left wherever we notice and notice to do so all we have to do is allow ourselves to notice 
and that's what you've done. You've, right. you've allowed yourself. When you was talking about the negative, where you're like, "Dang, I wonder why. I wonder why things aren't working out." It's because I was around too much negativity, and then once I got out of that, I'm like, my mind cleared up. I'm able to do things that I, back in the time, I was like, "Dang, why is this not working?" Now it's working. Yeah, and you will know what what mindset you've got to get in to be inspired to do what you do. But ultimately, the only place we ever get stuck is in our own mindset. Yes. And the only person standing in your way is you. So just move yourself out of the way or that person that needs or needed that energy Easter. from the Oops. others. Because although that, those times with those people be negative, they don't feel good. They can feel comforting safe right. because we're used to them and actually misery loves company but ultimately you're on a mission to your next destination and the one after that and the one after that and anybody slowing you down uh, well anybody slowing you down weighing you down holding you back stopping you just okay all love and light and bye but i've got time i'm on my I'm on my journey. They might catch you up or they might not, but right. it's okay. It's all good. Um, and those people, as we move forward with our journey. What's those... going on, brother? I yes. want to come here and boost this shit up a little bit, but you know I love you, bro. I ain't mean hey, to be in conversation. Real quick, my bad to um, disturb your talk, Will. Jay Wavy, follow Will. Will is a, a mental health coach and a vice coach. So, like, shit that we be going, shit that goes on in our mind, Talk to him, bro. This this is the guy that helped me get through what I need to get through. Well, I was just letting you know that everybody should go follow my dog, Foreign, because I love you, boy. And you're the most love selfish you too, nigga dog. I know. you most selfish nigga I know, man. I just want to come here and jump in and say some shit real quick for you. Shit, man. You know what I'm you know. saying, bro? Keep fucking going up. Keep being fucking foreign trip, nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's being Jay Wavy, man. You know what I'm saying? You know I love you, brother. You know I don't forget about shit, nigga. All right, man. Slime shit. All right, Will. Wow. Right, brother. Make sure you follow Will. Will's that guy, Jay Wade. Uh, for sure. Oh, appreciate you. That was a bit of a shock to my system. Um, <laughs> yeah, so those, as we move forward in our journey, those people that were with us at this lower vibration, they're going to do one of three things. They're either going to come with us, they're going to leave our life because they just drift away or we, they cross the boundary and we kick them out. Or right. they'll be the ones saying you haven't changed and trying to pull you back down because, or pull you back because actually they feel comfortable with you back here. And so we that momentum that you've got to travel forward on your journey to your destination, a lot of the time our journey can be a solitary one. And right. then we can have traveling companions at different points within that journey. But it is about getting used to being having a solitary journey a lot of the time. And in masculine energy, as we move forward and push next step, next step, go forward, it's amazing to keep doing that. But it is essential that we spend time in what is called the feminine energy, where we just sit and notice. It's not male, female. It's sit, notice feel all the emotions energy be inspired for your right. for your line of work as well actually if i continue to keep going forward i might be missing some things let me just stop notice where i am notice how far i've come because i can feel proud of that and before i carry on let me just sit and as you get those inspired thoughts as you will with the right. line of work that you do you get that inspiration actually that comes from sitting still not traveling forward and the combination of the two along our journey is essential and so give yourself time to do that and you'll get whatever you need. But you are Energy working everything. out now. Yeah, you know what works for you and you're deciding and choosing that rather than accepting the things that don't work for you. And ultimately, if you don't reach your goal, if you don't reach the level of success that you want to, you know that you're in, you're in control of that. Exactly. And therefore, I would be the problem to why I'm not satisfied to where I want to be at in life. Yeah. Same as but everybody in the thing. party, everybody watching you not because somebody else is bad in your circle you are the reason why things do not work out you you got to change the mindset you got to change your energy me i'm a virgo so i'm a i read earth i read energy you feel me I so, like, so i'm a son as well. i could feel i could feel if i could fuck with you before you even speak all i gotta do is have you in my presence my energy would yeah. tell me if we can sing if not i can't be around you no selfishness, yeah. but it's just how it is. You feel me? Yeah. Well, we're just different. We're just different, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we're different. If you accept a situation in your life, if it's unacceptable, if you accept the unacceptable, you're making it acceptable, aren't you? And that person's not going to change. Right. Those people Everybody in the comments, comment below your horoscope. I just want to see what... Your star sign. Give us your yeah. sun, sun, sun sign or uh, star sign. Um, yeah, so it's uh, situations coming to our life. 
and well we teach people how to treat us by accepting or not their behaviors towards us or telling them how to treat us but right. if we accept the unacceptable we're making acceptable and so if you accept those situations for yourself you're in control of it which is great exactly. because then you can change it as you have as you've started to already exactly and so just notice for yourself what situations you want to get yourself into. What do I want? What do I want in life? What things yeah. do I want to put up with? What things I do not want to put up with? Yeah. And then if you, I do have to seven. put up with something, I have to learn to discipline that type of energy source around me. Well, well you've got three options when you're in a situation in your life that you're not comfortable or happy in. Okay, first one is you lower your expectations to meet the situation at a lower level. Don't do that, brother. Don't do that, okay? Keep your expectations where they are. The second one is you improve the situation to meet your expectations. Now, that's all well and good if it's just about you. If there's somebody else involved, you might be waiting forever or you get it out of your life. So you lower your, expecta you lower your expectations, you increase the actual situation to meet your expectations, which often you can't do unless somebody else, uh, unless there's nobody else involved, or right. you get it out of your life. But notice that although we feel quite dependent on people and situations here and today, ultimately you could lose everybody in your life today and you'd still be all right. You'd find a way. Yes. You'd find a way. And those things circle, you... Everybody in my old circle is, is swiped out of my life yeah. for a reason. Yeah, I mean, listen, those things that we stressed about last year that we thought were going to destroy us, take over, destroy the world, massive last year, we probably can't even remember what they are now. Exactly. They, they weren't as big as what we made them because the fear response makes it huge. And knowing that we've overcome every challenge that's ever come our way, we know we can continue to do so. We don't always know what to do as we reflect back, but we will know what to do in the moment. Trust yes. yourself believe in yourself you will know what feels right and if you get it wrong if you fuck it up you can just change it yeah it's, it's not a it's loss different. it's a lesson so then yeah. when that time comes around again you know what to do what not to do yeah but notice it's only a lesson if we decide it to be lessons needed to be learned can be painful when burnt right but if you resist they will persist until you decide and know that every failure is an opportunity to grow you've got to make that decision when the student is ready, the teacher will appear because actually the teacher isn't necessarily a person. It can be a situation. Noticing that the situation well, is like there said, like and we, can't, we don't see it as a lesson until we're ready as a student. Right. So it's still around us, but we notice we can push it on and say it's other people or make myself feel bad about it until we go, well, actually, this is a lesson. I've now become a student. So when the student's ready, hey, I like, the I like teacher how you put that. I like how you put that. Okay, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be exactly. a situation. Learn even with ourselves, even with ourselves. The biggest step forward any of us can make is the biggest secret in the universe, mate. Once you stop attaching stuff, situations, people to your self-worth, freedom and liberation in your mind is unbelievable. Yes. Nothing means anything until we give it meaning. It doesn't have to affect how we feel about ourselves, our self-worth, unless we decide it to. So take all the good shit and forget about the bad shit. Forget about it, yep. And so Just keep that, moving that's forward it. and we, keep your head up. What we do is the situation's bad and we feel bad about that. And then we make ourselves feel bad about that situation. We layer on this other layer of now I'm bad. So as in, if you if you you got a project with your work and the attempt fails, that doesn't make you a failure. It makes the attempt a failure. Right. Every inventor. So that you know what to do and what to expect the next time yeah, you try to do exactly. another project. But so many people go, I failed, I'm a failure, and then self worth drops. No, I'm not going to bother again. I'm too scared. It mean that means I'm down. It would, nothing means anything until we give it meaning. Don't give it meaning. Right. Well, give it meaning and go, do you know what? I've just taken another way not to do it. What's next? Give me another one. Let's go again. Let's go again. Just keep it up. That way you don't get discouraged and you're not ego, but your uh, your motivational drive yeah. keeps increasing. You don't want your motivational drive to just... Yeah, absolutely. But ultimately, then you mate, lose yourself. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Motivation comes and goes. Irrelevant. You've got right. a goal. If you wake up tomorrow, you're not motivated. You've got to get that shit done anyway. Right. It doesn't matter whether you're motivated. Just get it done. Get it Notice done. Sometimes motivation. Then you'll be proud of yourself later on. Instead of your head, yeah. you'll be like, damn, I wish I had finished that. I wish I really did. Yeah. 
But it's it's the motivation like, okay, I will come. I, I still accomplished this, so I, I still feel proud of myself. As an individual. Absolutely. You might notice that motivation isn't there when your alarm goes off in the morning, but it is there when you're in the studio after an hour and you've woken up. And so when you wake up, you've got to get through that out. It's irrelevant. You don't want any motivation, right. but you do you know. You just got to push through. Come later. It's Absolutely. A, I, call it, I call it a hustle drive. The hustle yeah. drive. That's what I call it. Yeah. Because, yeah, nobody, well, no one's coming to save you. So grab a sword, grab a shield, and go save yourself. What I mean exactly. is get the tools you need, defend and attack whenever you need to. But notice, actually, a sword light your, isn't light your used, flame. Yeah, a sword isn't necessarily an offensive weapon. It can just be a reminder for other people. Don't come too close, because I will use it if I need to. It's actually exactly. a tool. It's a tool that we've got. So just notice you've got all the tools you need. You know what motivates you. That comes and goes. Motivation is irrelevant. Set your goal. Go and achieve it anyway. Nobody's going to do it for you. And do it some for advice you. for the viewers. What I usually do is um, if I have something I want to do, I make sure I put it on a calendar or like a, a board that I can see. Like most of the time you're going to be in the bathroom. I have one in the bathroom. I got one in the kitchen. I got one in my room. So anywhere I go, I'm not going to be like, okay, I, I shouldn't do this today. I, I'm setting myself reminders. I have to get it done. I have to do this. I have yeah. to finish and complete this for myself so I can feel better, so I can keep being consistent. And when another situation comes down, I, I can keep going. All I have Absolutely. to do is remind myself. Even on my phone, I, I set reminders on my phone too to let me not forget that I have something important to do. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, if there's you you were just talking, I think on your live, you were talking about reward, like to get the reward. So I talk about effort versus reward. And if right. the reward's not big enough, we can find we're not willing to put the effort in. Well, actually, you can make the reward bigger. Actually, the more effort I put in, the greater the reward is. Uh, what yes. One of your bro said. And so, of course, do that. If you find I'm not willing to put the effort in, have you made the reward big enough? If you can't, it might mean that project's not for you. It's, you're not ready for it because the other the other way is risk and reward and of course if you don't uh, well risk and effort and risk and all of that so if you don't do something that something bad's going to happen right and if you do do something something good will happen so you can go either way we're often motivated in two different ways we're either a moving away from person or a moving towards and we can change, but ultimately, notice most of the time you're either one or the other. So right. if the way you talk is always, I want to be there, I want to be there, rather than I, I want to move away from there, notice you're a towards person. Yes. If you can't get motivated in a certain situation, have you told yourself you're towards? Do both, basically. What are you moving away from? I'm the type of person where I don't, I, I love to take risk. So like when people around me be like, oh, I don't feel like doing this or I can't do it. I'd be like, you can. You just got to change your words. You got to change the, the first title of your words. That mm -hmm. way your brain can be like, you know what? I can't do this instead yeah. of I can't. I can't doesn't make sense to me. I can't yeah. is somebody being insecure about themselves or well, comfortable be being how they are. I'd rather be uncomfortable than comfortable. Absolutely. Fear will, is usually what's fear, stopping. yes. I can't do it. If you ever find yourself saying I can't, just say again. I just haven't found a way to do it yet. Or I just haven't found I, a way to do it. Exactly. Or just not at this moment. I can yeah. get to it later. Just not right now, but later yeah. in the day I can get to it. When if we you, restrict ourselves, I yeah. can't. I mean, it's not possible. That's not true most of the time. When you Actually, say I can, it can, you're blocking your to. blessings and you're blocking yeah. your spiritual energy. Absolutely. I can. I'm just choosing not to right now because of this reason. But remember, most of the time what stops us is fear. Yeah. Because we don't know what's going to happen. You're a risk taker. So let me get on with it. I'd rather you take the risk, create even if it's good or bad. I, I see the income. Because then if I don't yeah. take the risk and I'd be like, dang, now my, my consciousness, I'm like, dang, I really, I really should have done something. Well, you, you do never it. know, do you? If you don't do it, you, you'll exactly. never know. So actually, what's the worst that could happen? It doesn't go the way you want it to go. It's always fixable. Well, kind of always fixable. You wouldn't let yourself get into the situation where it goes too far. You'd go, uh -uh, I'm, it's too right. far. Knowing that those situations that you put yourself in, are they a risk? Yeah, as we tell ourselves, we go into it. Yeah, they are a risk. But the more you get into it and the more of those you do, the less risky it is for you because you will have learned behavioral flexibility, the ability to try different approaches. Um, God, you, you bounce back and try again. Resilience. You know that when, when the, the attempt fails, 
the world doesn't collapse. Everything's going to be okay. I can just go again. And so actually, the more you do it, the more you face your fears, the right. more you can create the belief, I can overcome my fears, and then you can overcome everything. Because most of the time, fears, fears are, well, fear stops us going into a dangerous situation. That's how our brain functions. If we right. tell it that's dangerous, it's risky, our brain will tell us the worst thing possible to stop us going into it. It's trying to keep us alive, actually, but it's not necessarily relevant. Just notice what we tell us as an ask. Where's my evidence? I haven't got any evidence to prove that this is going to go badly, but I've got a ton of evidence to prove that I take risks and I achieve, and if the attempt fails, I can go again. So just Hello. remind yourself of all Hola. the evidence you've got that you're going to be all right. Right. What's happening? Sorry. <laughs> oh, Leticia, follow Will. Will is a nice uh, coach, mental health advisor. Do you, want, could, do you want me to introduce myself? Because a nice Yeah, coach, go ahead. I, I'd rather you introduce yourself. I was just trying to, you know, say. Tell I'm a clinical, clinical hypnotherapist, behavioral coach, mental health first aid, a personal trainer. I like to help people succeed and find their happiness mentally, well, mind, body, soul, uh, in every way. It's my um, blessing to be able to help so many people. So if you are in a situation that makes you feel any less than good, know that there is always a way out. Sometimes you might not know how, but I'm sure I can help you find the way out. Yes. Sorry, no speak English. <laughs> Who are you bringing on to this live, man? Why are you bringing people in? This is about me and you. She speaks Portuguese, but I'll, yeah, that's why I'll try to keep it. Uh, she understands just a little bit of English, but she, uh, I'm going to recommend her to you. She's, but if she doesn't good. understand English, I might not have a very, very, be very successful. Yeah. Oh. But I always try to, um, without a motive, motivate people that were in a dark spot to try to uplift them and yep. what my people used to tell me is certain people you can't help because they don't want to help themselves so I've learned well to you, you can't we cannot save those people who are not ready to be saved in fact we can't save those people who do not feel the need to be saved it just feels like criticism if ask people are you happy if they say yes leave them alone because ultimately all you're going to do is take away their happiness right and then you're taking energy from yourself trying to put into someone else yeah. when they don't want it at the moment yeah, ask them. Ask them what they need. If they're complaining about some the situation, what do they need from you? Comfort, solutions, do you want to agree with you? What do you want? Most people probably won't even know, to be fair. Right. So, never read these comments. Man, this is between me. Yeah. Yeah, stop bringing people on this live, man. What is your need to bring extra people on this live? My bad. No, nah, I was just trying to, you know, network, you know, bring some people that I know to chat with you because I know certain people be wanted to need someone to talk to. My brother, I, yeah. my focus is on you. Yes. I need anybody else. Need no anybody one else joining the live. No. You're right, famous. The people, the, people, the people that are meant to watch this and share it or not are here. and We don't need to bring them on. But me and you connecting as we have. Um, next stages of your journey. What's next for you? Next in my journey is um, I want to reopen my clothing line. I want to try to get another source. Right now, I have four sources of income. I make uh, I make money off of the internet. Let's just say that. Um, I want to build. That sounds dodgy. I'm to do you might need to clarify. You might need to clarify because that sounds dodgy as hell, mate. But, right. um, it's, All right, uh, so, um, I do digital <laughs> marketing. I'm for digital marketing. I have a couple of uh, companies that work with me, and I help them build like uh, a following. You know, get them exposure and stuff like that. Same with like influencers trying to make it come up. Uh, basically, yeah. I'm independent, so basically all my experiences, I can kind of give someone the right direction, a little shortcut, so they don't take some of the lessons. Yeah. that I took in my journey so I do that I also do like I get I monetize from my music so I make money off of my music and my content and stuff like that so that, um, that's passive income then as right. in it's there you just earn from right it. You, I just yeah. have to keep going same as being an influencer so me being an influencer and musician I make money off of both of the things that I do so now what I want to try to do is I want to try to get into real estate 
So when I want to get into real estate, I have to. I've been around a couple of people. So, so what you, what you get, what are you going to give up to move into real estate? Because you're going to have five sources of income. You right. spread yourself a bit too thin. Although I know some of that is passive income. What's right. the need? Would you do you need to take some energy from what you're already doing? To stop doing it to put into. So real I feel like. Or? When I first started doing everything that I wanted to do, a lot of people kept telling me, why am I going in a loop doing this and this and this and that stick to one thing? I knew I was right. So what I used to do is I have seasons for everything. So I'll probably when you put say down you like- knew you were, When you say you knew you were right, what do you mean? You knew you were making the right decisions? Yes, instead right of decisions. keeping myself stagnant. So I'm not gonna belittle myself and just stay on one thing. I wanna kind of expand. So. If I'm but that's this, your level, but that's, I've got to challenge you, buddy. Go that's your level of standard. If I stay on one thing, that means to you that that means it belittles you. That's yes. your choice to make it. Do right. that. You don't have to. You could be an expert in one field and be the best in the world. Why, why do you need to be spread across? You could stay in one and be the best right. ever. Me being like that, I feel like if I stick to one thing, I'm only going to gravitate and grab one community rather than if i do five different things i can grab a community of everybody and everybody kind of sinks into my personality and comes why is it why is that important to you um because i just want to build i want to network me i'm strongly on networking you know networking is key to being successful and i might come it's about numbers numbers then isn't it it's numbers quantity yeah right so i want to be around people that's like-minded, just like me. So, you know, they, they can put me onto something that I might want to do, or I can put them on yeah. something that I already do. So say like, I do five things, right? And I meet somebody and I'm like, oh, I want to get into real estate. I just told you about real estate. I might meet somebody within these five categories and they'd be like, oh, you know, such and such. I have somebody I could recommend you to do real estate. What, what's your limit? Is it five? Is it 10? Unlimited. Is it- Unlimited. But then but surely there'll be a number where you, you're going to start to decrease so, your input in some of those. I feel like you're right because I don't want to uh, have too many of those things and then I don't have time for the other stuff. So what I try to do is discipline my time on everything that I try to do. So I don't spend too much time, you know, say like, for instance, I don't I wouldn't spend too much time going live and not spend time enough in the studio. So I'm going to. Yeah you know, split both of that. So then I have time for both and I feel good that, okay, I, I accomplished two of these things at one time in, in a day type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you need a life coach. Right. That's why, you know what I'm saying? That's why I, I focus. You and I need to talk in private because this is right. not going to do it on live. And I can help you get that in a structure for yourself, one that works for you. Um, right. You're a very um, progressive guy, as in you see you'll connect with people quite easily and you'll be able to um, kind of understand their needs even before they do. And I noticed that obviously you've got your own needs as you want, as you branch out, the more numbers you have here, the more people you'll connect to. But ultimately that means the less energy you can give those people. Where does it drop below your standard for yourself? Because you'll have a, I can drop, but be like, right, you have a level. I'm not giving myself. You have a level, I'm sure, right. where it would be. This isn't. I'm not myself now. I'm not giving them the real me, and that's when you've gone too far. How many of these you've said unlimited? I would. I know why you said that, but I challenge that because you spread yourself too thin, as the saying goes. Right. I just don't want be able to give feel it. like I would cut myself short. I want to, because I'm I'm very open minded. So like, I try to build and gain as much knowledge as I can. So that yeah. way, you know, I, I really, uh, it's a lot I can say. It's a lot. Not, I, knowledge I, is power, right? Yes. That's famous box. My name's Will, not Willie, but, you know, I'll take it anyway. Um, <laughs> thank you, brother. Um, yeah, and I mean, just as I said before about those moments in what I call the feminine energy, just stop. Just wait. You're so like, what's next? What's next? Stop. Notice what you've got. How are you feeling about it all? Is there one of these five now that actually I'm kind of, I can let that one drift away and I want to put more effort into real estate? Stop, because if you just keep going, go, 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 and you're going to be like this. And before you know it- I'm a burnout. Oof, yeah. And then you won't be giving your standards. So just stop, notice what you've got. How do you feel about it all? Do you still want to carry on with these? Great. If you don't and you want to drop one, that's great too. Okay. But if you're just so forward, on, 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 what's next, what's next, what's next? Ultimately, you'll have so many plates spinning, you will drop one. 
And when one goes, they can all go. So right. just stop and notice what you've got. So just Are keep you... what I have at the moment and see. Well, I'm not even saying that. I just want you to spend some time, stop pushing forward with plans. Just sit where you are with it. Notice what you currently got. How are all my projects going? I don't know how many you've got at the moment. You've got four, haven't you? How are they all going? You've got a couple that are passive income. They're all they're all good because they're right. just they're going to keep going. Great. So what are you actually putting your energy into? Well, I'm assuming you put some energy into the passive income through marketing and stuff. Yes. Yeah? So there is some energy. What can you take from some of those to invest in the note, or have you got extra? Ultimately, if you focus all your energy on one thing, you could be the best in the world. Are you ever going to be the best in the world with five things? I don't know. But you like to do more things to keep your mind occupied. I can understand that. It's more challenging. It's more exciting. Uh, and there's, you know, when we first get something new, it's that new, uh, it's like getting a new car, the right. smell, the excitement. Um, and it is something that you can then mold into your own thing and as it becomes one of these things it becomes part of you just notice you will we will all get to that point right. where we spread ourselves too thin and obviously you're sat on a live before this talking and rolling whatever you're rolling in my opinion waste of time you got enough right. so you could be sitting doing something else it's not that it's a bad thing it's an enjoyable thing but you you've already got four and you want five when are you going to spend time what are you doing there so just notice those moments in time and sitting on your own actually could be on your own as you are now or in a coaching session like this we're right. we're just contemplating we're reflecting we're not even looking forward we're just reflecting back as we reflect back on your journey and go how far have you come let's just sit and feel proud about that right and that's what i do sometimes like i'll be by myself like right now and i'll just put on like some um anime meditation music and just yeah. recalibrate to where i started like my day one i'm like did i really you know how far did i go am i satisfied with the journey that i've taken since now till back then when i first started and i feel like i accomplished a lot i've took yeah. a lot of lessons but i'm glad i took them so when they come around i know exactly what to do again and i will i'm, I'm very good on meditating like i meditate a lot just so i can you know cleanse my energy Basically, I, I go to the beach maybe like yeah. three, four times a year, maybe more, depending on the situation, and I would cleanse my body. So when I cleanse my body, it's basically a inspiration cleanse for me so that, that way I'm not burnt out. I've been burned out so many times that yeah. I know when I'm going to burn out. So I know yeah. when to take a I'll pause. Look, I'm going to teach you how to pause. I'm going to teach you how to slow down time, Okay. Right. Anybody that's watching, you can do this with us. Um, I'm going to disconnect. Oh, you might be able to hear anyway. I can't even see if you've got your eyes closed. Close your eyes for me. Have you ever seen a video of a, the slow motion hummingbird? You know, a hummingbird that flaps its wings really quick. And the slow motion video of it, where it slows right down. Right. I want you to notice now, as you see that image in your mind, yeah, I already got goosebumps with that music. Just listen to the sound of my voice and go inside your mind. Any outside influences can fade off into the background. All that is here right now is my voice, the music, and inspired thoughts in your mind as you shut out everything else. Notice just notice the hummingbird now slow motion you can almost imagine i can almost imagine stop I talking can. stop i want you to just focus on you because you want to respond i don't need one i can tell when you're responding without you talking okay your your viewers will know what's going on okay just close just focus in your mind the hummingbird, slow motion. You can slow down time whenever you need, actually. And notice in each and every moment, if I just take it even more slowly, you can almost notice that you can stop time in any moment and as you just 
let everything go. Anything you've been holding on to, anything weighing you down, holding you back, stopping you, just let it go. You can just stop time. And as you do, inspired thoughts can come into your mind. You may find when it comes to your mind, empty spaces are not the best places to hide the things you don't know how to deal with. So in this deepened state of relaxation with the might of our unification, as your conscious and unconscious minds connect, my energy I share with you to protect. We will unearth and discover all the treasure we can uncover to work through and release and bring you much happiness and peace. And open your eyes when you're ready. Because as you connect with your unconscious mind, which holds everything you've ever experienced, you will get memories and experiences float to the surface that you perhaps forgotten or never even remembered in the first place. Those will be your inspiration. Those will be what take you on. But you have to slow down and stop. Just stop. You're continuously traveling forward. I'm guessing as a child, self-worth or how you made to feel about yourself, you never felt good enough no matter what you had to do, no matter what you did with your self-worth. And so what you've done is you're now investing it all into your job, career, and now you're an overachiever. But actually, ultimately, they're not related and it will never be enough. So why might could he help you with both of those? Because actually being successful in our jobs don't make us feel better about ourselves. It's a temporary fix. You're an overachiever. You will continue to be so. I'm going to help you with both sides of that. But notice that nothing is connected to our self-worth unless we decide it to be, okay? Right. The truth about self-worth is simple. It's a decision which can be made daily or hourly with much precision. Yet despite the absence of any actual criteria, this choice can often cause upset or hysteria. Others' opinions of us we determine undeniably dictate if we're a monarch or just vermin. But if you look closely, you'll notice and see that people are all equal to you and to me. And those whose opinions make you feel bad or down have motive of power and steal your crown. So stand up tall and show them your presence. Kings and queens aren't concerned with the opinions of peasants. So you can decide as you start each day to build yourself in your own special way. And go make a list of length and of girth which allows only you to determine your worth. There's no self-worth checklist. We decide what makes us feel better or worse about ourselves. The negative stuff, irrelevant. Don't let it affect you. The positive, grab hold of it and make it mean everything. Make mountains out of the positive stuff and you will continue to grow. The negative stuff won't mean anything. And it doesn't ever mean anything unless we decide it to. It's a part of our journey. It doesn't define us unless we make it define us. I'm a victim, I'm this, I'm that, because it's happened to me and I'll make victim mindset. That's your choice. You're not doing that. Right. Actually, you're doing the opposite. You're bypassing it and steamrolling it out of the way. But actually, it's good to sit and reflect on the journey you've come on personally as well as professionally and start to notice that despite what others were either unconsciously or deliberately trying to make you feel about yourself, those people that perhaps made you feel not as good as other people, first of all, they wouldn't have realised you'd be here talking to me about it now, but those people have no effect on our lives. Their opinions of us, irrelevant. People's problems with us, that exactly that, their problem. People's right. thoughts about us, we're not mind readers, so leave it alone. Other people do not determine our self-worth. Other people will show us the worth of our relationship with them but not about our self-worth, okay? Right. Build your build your self-worth using your own checklist, whatever you want it to be. Every day you look at I can relate to this, this topic right here because I feel like, like I said, all the people that I had in my circle, other people from the outside in was like, they're envy of you. So I've learned to let them go because, you know, just like what you said, with overachievement, I feel like I haven't really sat down and appreciated what I really achieved, I just keep on going. I I don't feel satisfied, but I should be satisfied on the things that I actually did accomplish and actually had good moments at, you know what I'm saying? Well, so I have to well you're, saying sh you're saying should, that means it's an expectation, right. okay? What basically have to. Is, is, 
because personally you've been made to feel not as good as or not good enough personally right. you can't there's not always a measure here so what you've done is you've invested into something that has you've pushed and overachieved your work but they're not right. in the same measure so this will never be enough for this i'm going to help you with this okay oh. This you'll continue to do, and you will do it because you want to and you're able, not because you feel a certain negative way if you don't. Right. Okay. So I took that into consideration. That's, that's so not in my head. Other people are relevant. I know it's not easy because actually our belief structure is in the back of our mind. It's the niggle in the back of your mind that causes you doubt every time you might say, yeah, I, am, I have got this. I should be happy. And then your mind goes, no, you're not. It's the, it's the belief structure. It's your inner child. That's what we're going to sort out. Not your fault. Not right. your fault. How other people treat us as we're children build up our identity around the age of seven. We're unaware of what we're actually doing. We then create a belief structure, things you should, shouldn't do, could, can, A false image do. in your head. Yeah, and of course, you then reinforce that throughout your life. And as you surround yourself with those five people, they're actually ones that are inspired or jealous of you. They're here, further back on the journey. And so because you're then influenced by those five, you're holding yourself back. Look for the next five. Who inspires you? Right. The people that can be inspired by you. It's great. But if you spend your energy all with them, then you will feel I'm taking, you'll be comfortable. Taking for myself. I had yeah, a talk with somebody yesterday, and I was like, um, I used to be, so I used to be the one, say we're in, in a group of five, I'm the thumb. So I used to be in a group of five, right? So yeah. I, I know personally, anybody that I'm around, I automatically inspire and motivate just based on my personality because I keep it real with myself. And that, how does that feel for you to do that? It feels good because it's organic. So now, yeah. I told them, I was like, I don't want to be in that situation no more. I'd rather be in front of four other people who I look up to. So that way I'm not stealing their energy because I'm kind of in their niche, but I'm building myself up being around those type of four people that's inspired yep. me instead of me They're being inspired, the one inspired four people. Absolutely. It's like me training at the gym. I like to train with someone that lifts heavier than me. Right. So then I want to lift heavier. You want to learn how to get someone. to that level so that when yes. you experience... If I'm yeah, training with someone that lifts lighter, it's great, but it's not going to push me forward. Right, because so you're limiting thing. yourself doing that. Rather than, yes. okay, I want to lift more than he does or lift as equal as him. Let me let me yes. hang around him so I can build myself up, you know, so Absolutely. I feel better about myself. But note, but notice, his, there's the thing, right? Notice, if just because I can't, it doesn't mean I feel less about myself. OK, right. I don't attach anything to my self-worth, only the good stuff. There's nothing negative will affect my self-worth, how I feel about myself. OK, right. unless I've done something that goes through my my boundaries, I know I've done something. Then, of course, I'm going to beat myself up because I know I've crossed my boundary. I've done something. I've behaved in a way that doesn't fit who I am and who I want to be. But right. most of the time, no. And people might troll me online and I'm like, you picked the wrong person, mate. I'm really sorry. And because I also know that no normal person with their self-esteem intact feels the need to drag somebody else down with their energy. It's usually, well, your behavior is all about you. Are you all right? Because I know this isn't about me. Are you all right? Do you need any mental health support? Because I know it's not about me. Right. And so if I fucked up, yeah, I can admit that. I'll take the feedback. But it's not going to affect how I feel about myself any longer than it needs to to inspire me to make changes. Apologize and change. That's all we can do, ever. Right. And move forward. You can't, and move forward, yeah. you can't hold, hold in the past because then you're just... You know what I'm saying? Your mind is... Guilt, yeah, guilt, regret, it will hold you back. It just exactly. hold you back. That's yeah, why I've absolutely. learned to just let things be and let it go. Yeah. If it's not meant to be, it's just not meant to be. If it is meant to be, just keep keep that around or keep doing that thing that I'm doing. Yes. If, it's, yeah. if it makes no sense and it's uh, antagonizing my energy, I shouldn't be around it because then it's just in intimidating my my drive. Yeah, I mean, the effort, it should feel, you know, we want to put hard work in, but it shouldn't feel difficult. It should feel right. Organic. We should, we should yes. know where, yeah, as you say, organic. We will know we're on the right path. And with every step that we proceed, every step that we take, we will feel and we will know that we're on the right path because we know when we're not on the right path. We know right. we're on the left, we're on the left path because someone's made us take a detour. Someone's driven us, someone's taken the wheel and turned us on the left course. It feels wrong. With every step, it feels wrong. And we can obviously get led down that path, pulled along and kind of like, oh, and we know it feels wrong. We know right. it feels wrong. Stop. 
turn around and go back to the fork in the road. Always choose the right path for you. It doesn't matter if everybody else goes on the other path, choose the right path for you. Right. Nobody's living your life, paying your bills, doing your job. Nobody is going to make you, well, no one's coming to save you. Grab a sword, grab a shield, save yourself. Grab a sword, grab a shield, what does that mean? Have your defensive and offensive weapons. They're tools, basically. Know where your boundaries are, your shield. Know what tools you've got, your sword, to use as you step forward and progress throughout your journey. Everybody's behavior is about them. Your behavior is all about you. Mine's all about me. Don't attach it to how we feel about ourselves. Notice we're just at different stages. Okay, okay. let me just let this go. Let me let it go. It's not always easy. It's not always easy. It's not always easy. But and it I, will feel right. When respectfully, it's you're, you're the only person, because I've been told I should see a therapist. But I, I like I like. Well, I am. I am a yeah, therapist. Yeah, so that's why I like, I like talking to you. Yeah. And the words that you're giving me, I'm getting goosebumps. Like, you told me to close who, my eyes and meditate. I, I, I is took it? a pause. Who's I'm in your life time that's down. told you? Who's in your life that's told you you need to see a therapist? <laughs> My my people's um, some of my friends. It's because I'm I'm a type of person just, where I just I just hold everything in and I tell everybody I'm, I'm good. Deep right. down inside, I got a lot of things that I want to have a conversation with. But I feel like certain people would yeah. not understand my mindset because I feel like I'm I'm different. I feel like no no disrespect to nobody. I just feel like I just see life different sure. and I know what I want in life. And the people that I've been around have been simulated to this society where they don't see the the one percent that could actually get mm -hmm. to where they want to yeah but what what's also great about you same for me is that although you know you're different and you know what you believe in your opinions you're also open to having your opinion change you're open to know that as your opinions change and you gr you can grow and evolve from it this isn't a, a an argument that you want to win actually you're open to listening and learning and growing and evolving of course if we're getting pulled one way i mean i'm i'm glad that you've got people in your life that said it in a nice way not during an argument going you need to see if i can therapist right. um actually yes yeah, we hold that stuff in then what are we doing? We're holding on to that negative energy and it takes effort and it takes a load of strength and it just takes up too much time and it's not meant for us. So yeah, deal with it. And it won't take right. us very long. It won't take us very long at all. Yeah. And I feel like the more I hold in, I'm beating myself up. and Because you're attaching it to your self-worth. Yes. And then I'll be like, dang, is something really is, is something really wrong with me? And I'll have those conversations with myself sometimes, but it's just, Certain people just don't understand my mindset. No, absolutely. Well, you can explain and I can understand, I'm sure. But notice, I don't fix people because I don't believe people are broken. I, I fix their problems and their issues that they have. And so we will take your journey together and we will do that together. You'll be times where you come up with the answer or I do or whatever. We just we do it together. Right. It's a, a journey that we take together. And, and ultimately, I need three things from you. Trust me in the process. Be open and honest and put the effort in. And I know you're going to give me all of that. Yeah. So just surround yourself with people situations thoughts things that feel right and anything any situation that makes you feel any less than good you don't have to stay in it right. um, and we can find where we feel shit because we feel I'm st i've got myself in this situation we aren't always to blame for the situations we find ourselves in but we are responsible for whether we stay in them or not when we're, we're aware of we're in them you're aware you're in this situation you don't want to be they're doing something about it brilliant there's nothing else you can do it's great right. Right, exactly. Intention exactly. is key. Intention is key. And you, my brother, are a good person. Your intention is good. But we can't always see our way through the darkness. Right, because Cause cause there's a lot of darkness it. around us. Even stepping outside, once you yeah. go outside your doors, you're in darkness. You just got to find feel, the light. My slogan is, I am your lighthouse in the storm. But remember, right. a light can always be found simply by looking in a mirror. As you look in a mirror and reflect, as we will reflect on your life, you will see the light is there within you. And so the mirror metaphor, as you reflect on your life, you'll see right. that light yourself. But in the storm, in the dark, I don't know where to go. Lighthouse, I'm there. But you can right. find the light within yourself as well. Hold on, I got <laughs> Ultimately, everybody needs to see a therapist at some point. Because yeah. we can get ourselves in situations. Actually, I've had a couple of people come to me. Yeah, I'm all good. I just want to just go through everything. I'm going really well. And I always find something. It's not a negative thing. Right. But it might be a negative belief that's holding us back. It might be trauma in the past that we're not even aware of. It could be an addiction, a phobia, whatever. I can deal with it all. 
See, I don't have any addictions to anything, so I feel good about you myself on that. Like weight. Well, I've slowed down. I've I've abused. Let's last do, time we do talked. You, do you do you need it? No. See, like prove it. I mean, I said this to you last time. Prove it. I think I'm sure I said yeah, this to you last time. Yeah, I've only it. hit the vape. I only probably hit the blunt maybe once or twice, but I haven't. I don't smoke. I probably smoke like once once or twice a day now. Okay. What does it give you when you smoke? What Just, does it take it, it your way from? What does it? Yeah. What does it take you away from, and what does it bring you? So it'll it take you away so from stress. Me, me being a hundred with myself when I smoke, it's for me to meditate, relax, and if I'm doing a task, it helps me just to stay locked in and focus until yeah. that task is finished and complete. Mm -hmm. I don't smoke just to smoke to escape my reality. I don't smoke to just hang out with people, and I don't do that. I don't do none of that. Is I mean, ultimately, I mean, it's Well, this is a thing. Uh, um, a captured moment. Yeah. Um, People that are addicts will tell themselves all sorts of things. I don't need, I can, I'm not addicted because I've given up before, even though they've started again. They right. believe because they've been able to give up before, that means they can do it again. They're just choosing not to, and therefore they're not addicted. Typical addict talk, okay? Do it, prove it then. They never do, okay? Right. There's nothing, there's, but there's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not trying to shame people going, you know, I mean, ultimately it's a coping strategy. Nobody needs to smoke excessive amounts of weed or smoke it t in normal life. To feel better. You've got yeah. to a place where it benefits you by taking you away from something or bringing you something. It's a pain relief for some people. Coping strategy. Yeah. yeah? We don't, we shouldn't technically, biologically need it to survive, but it can be a coping strategy. Now, if you're using it as a coping strategy to deal with all the shit in your past, I'll tell you to carry on. Because right. if I take that away... You can't cope with all the shit, and you're, if you can't cope, worst case scenario, right? You keep doing it. We're going to solve what happened or whatever it is that makes you smoke it. You'll give up if you want to anyway, because you won't need it for that reason anymore. Right. A couple of months, of maybe a couple of years ago, I was, I was smoking it just to smoke, or, you know, my mental health wouldn't be right. So I would just smoke. I used to smoke like a lot of weed. But... Yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to help you get your mental health in the right space, and then you can choose to carry on smoking this or not. Right. I've we don't need the amount this. of smoking that I've done. Even if I'm hanging out with people and they're like, oh, you trying to hit this? I'm like, sometimes, majority of the time, I'll say no. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I'm by interested. myself, I'll smoke. Just I'm by myself. But I wouldn't face okay. the whole thing. It'll take me like two hours, three hours to finish a blunt because I'll hit it, yeah. put it down, do something else, hit it, Put it down, do something else. But notice for yourself as well that you are in masculine energy progressing forward. That will slow you down. In fact, that probably brings you into the energy I've suggested you go into. Right. You stop. But ultimately, your head isn't... I mean, I do know people that are in the creative industry that will smoke it deliberately just for that... Now, I do get a creative euphoria idea when I do that. smoke. It'll just, yeah. I'll just magically get inspiration. Just, you know, I might be yeah. in, a, in the area, say, like, I'm at an art gallery... And I just hit the blunt and I think of something, I think of an art piece and be like, you know what? I want to create something like that, but in my own way, or I just get uh, yeah. a quick motivational drive. And then I'm like, oh, bro, I got to go to the studio real quick. Or I want yeah. to do I'll shoot. just suggest that actually that comes when it needs to come and not feel the need. I have to do that to get that because that is that is when it's an addiction and it'll be well now i need it for that what else do i need it for and ultimately long-term substance abuse in any way is not good for us we're not meant to inhale that through our lungs and a right. respiratory system what does it do with our mental health It's lifting you it's making you high a long term for that i mean what's the is that really and it, it does system? kill your memory in your brain it does yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of people be like they'll think i'm slow but i'm intelligent but i'll play along with it but They'll be like, oh, you're just killing your brain cells or you're just making yourself sound slower than you usually sounded. Me, I feel like at times I'll, I'll feel like I'm slow, but in my brain, I'm moving fast as I can. But like, I yeah, can, but like you said, slow down time. Approach. When, when I smoke, yeah. I feel like I can slow down time and time is now with me. I'm not chasing time. Time is now with me. If you, if you, are, you able to, are you able to control it? Yes. I can control it. Like it, it's it's a it's a I don't know how to describe it. I just feel like I can bring 
I can slow down time just a little bit more so that way I can understand what it is that I'm doing in the moment. Okay, I'm going to read a poem out to you and not something else I'm going to read you about time. This is one I wrote a while ago. Perception in time. Time is constant by design in its existence, yet when forgotten or needed, it moves faster with persistence. If rushed with duress, it slows down in stubborn resistance. If respected, given value, it's on our side to give assistance. Time, when plural, will change upon reflection. It offers comfort or causes sadness in conversational inspection. If not valued, we can lose it, waste it in frustration, and can save us a great healer with relief and elation. We can be in it or on it, just before it and lose sight of it, and actually stop it as eyes meet when love bit. Learn to use it where able to ever since its conception. Time is constant and is relative based on perception. Right. We created time, the measures of it, and therefore notice when time flies when we're having fun and it slows down when we're not. So actually, you know, how to, we already know how to slow down and speed up time as I did it for you, but also we know when we're not enjoying something, it slows down. Why? Because we're focusing on the time. Right. And when we're having fun, we're not thinking about the time and it flies. So now you know to flip it the other way, if you're just getting on with things when you're bored, just get on with it, time will fly. And when you're enjoying something, focus in the moment and slow it down and you'll extend it. So you'll get the best of both worlds. Right. Okay. We already know how to slow it down and speed it up. When we are in the flow state, that's how we control time. Yes. I, our, percep I, our perception I of that. it. Yeah. Our perception of it. Yeah. The flow yeah, state. Absolutely. I think there's there's four different states, if I'm not mistaken, three or four states, correct? I don't know. Or it's unlimited. You tell me. I don't know. I actually don't know. Because I'd be doing research on, on stuff like this, too. But I forgot. Yeah, but you, exactly. you, tell, you tell me. You tell me. What would they be? What are they? Um... It would be the what's what's called the conscious state. You have the conscious state. Yeah. You have the flow state. You have the what is that? What is the word? I'm just gonna say two because I can't remember the other ones on the top of my head like that. But I know those two specifically. Like I be on YouTube and I be on Google a lot doing like my. Are they are they called four states of consciousness or? Yeah, four states of consciousness. Okay, four states of consciousness. Oh, God. And some, one, one of the consciousnesses. Oh, no, that's something, sleep. something different. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, well, there's, there's lots of different there's lots of different things. Um, waking, dreaming, deep sleeping. Yeah, but that's sleeping. Um, five levels of consciousness. Now we're going to be here all night, because I'm going to be looking at this. Um, Five levels of consciousness. Conscious, conscious, which is sensing, perceiving, and choosing. Right. Uh, Pre-conscious, which is memories that we can access. That's what I do with hypnosis. I can bring them up. Unconscious memories that we cannot access. I can bring them up with uh, with hypnosis. And non-conscious. So there's conscious, pre-conscious, unconscious, and non-conscious. Non-conscious is bodily functions without sensation. Oh, and subconscious is five. Subconscious inner child, self-image formed in early childhood. So conscious, which is what we're doing as we talk here, our conscious mind, we're only aware of seven to nine things as we talk now. It's only about seven to nine. Everything right. else drops into the unconscious. The pre-conscious is the memories we can access. So as I ask you, what's your mother's name? What's your mom's name? Mom, mother's name is Alison. I have her right. tattooed on me. So, so that was in your your pre-conscious, this is called. I would call it the unconscious, but pre-conscious. It was in there. As I've asked you, it's come up to your conscious. You've answered the question. As we keep talking, it'll drop back. You'll forget about it for a moment. Unconscious memories. So unconscious is memories we cannot access. They drop to the bottom of the unconscious mind. Trauma, childhood memories. They can often go and be gone forever. Isn't I that can... when you're sleeping? That state no. is No? When you're no, that, so they, this is a level of consciousness. They just drop and they're gone. Some can be brought up, but some with hypnosis, some can't. Non-conscious are bodily functions without sensation, like your heart beats on its own. You breathe without thinking about it, etc. Now, and sometimes I'll be forgetting how to breathe and walk. Like, it'll happen. Dude, or please don't say, that. don't say that on a live again. Because, <laughs> uh, because you're focusing on it, 
Right. It then becomes difficult. You're not meant to focus on it. So right. Forget it. Now, like sometimes, sometimes everybody in the comments, I like, it, it'll just happen like once in a while. Like, I'll forget how to breathe or I'll get overwhelmed just and I'll forget how to breathe or blink like, or just do. So if you get overwhelmed, it could be anxiety, which can cause a loss of breath and right. you get stuck, winded almost because it's anxiety. OK, that can cause that. You don't forget because you don't know in the first place. Right. Right. It just happens it's natural. unconsciously. Okay. Yeah. And then the subconscious, which is the inner child, the self-image formed in early childhood, which is what I was talking about. That's what we're going to do. If I were to ask you and you can think about this, how old is the boy in the back of your mind that still needs to be healed? How old is he? Do you know? Um, No. At the moment, okay. no. we, we will talk about that. If you don't know a number, it's okay. That's okay. what we do. I'll bring him into your mind and you heal. When we have a part, a part of us we don't like or that part, the inner child that's back there that's not integrated, pushed away, don't want to deal with them. That's the reaction we get when we lose control. It can be tears. It can be fighting. It can be anger. It comes out of nowhere and we go, oh, shit, what did I just do? Inner child coming out because right. he's there ready and waiting to get triggered because he's not integrated. So I'm going to integrate him as you, um, you know, accept the past to embrace the present and write your future as you write it. Because the best way to predict the future is to write it yourself right. as you write songs, as you create, you create your future. But you need that part of you because that part of you is essential. It's part of and your you journey. It. Yes. And it's, it is it's outside and it will jump forward possibly when you get triggered by certain things so we're going to embrace and make him a part of you inner child self-image forming childhood we don't do it consciously if if you've got a sibling and your mum said you well, what what should we have for dinner and your sibling's choice was always chosen it was always him and not you it was always other people and not you you can form a belief or a, a identity i'm not as good as other people other people are more important you, a bit yeah. And so, therefore, we can then get in a pattern where we reinforce that throughout our lives. We don't stand up for ourselves. We can't take compliments. We have to make other people happy because we can't make ourselves happy. We just don't feel as good as other people. And then we'll accept situations that reinforce that because anything better than that won't feel real, or feel fake. Right. So we stay and in there. Basically, and basically, we it. do it. And you don't yeah, feel and happy as we about do yourself. It, we reinforce. I'm still not good enough as we reinforce it. And then people have enough and they come and see me. <laughs> Yeah, and then I saw it, saw it out. So yeah, I help people change their belief structure, and then you start to see our mind has got loads of evidence to prove you're all good, but it hides the memories that don't fit your belief structure because it's got no purpose. As your belief structure changes, you're going to get loads of memories come back you've forgotten, and that's what happens with my clients. You go shit, I just remembered because you might have an overall belief your childhood was shit, and you won't have. Some clients I've got have no childhood memories, none. Yeah, for me, I only can remember until, like, middle school. I mean, our brain isn't developed enough until uh, to about the age of two, two and a half to store memory. So ultimately, everything before that is usually because we've been told a story. Um, but we can form belief structures without remembering the memories because it all goes into the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is where we form our belief structure. It's not something we walk around going, I can do this, I can't do that, I can do this, I can't do that. As we try and say something, as we say, I'm good enough, or try and do something, the niggle in the back of your mind that goes, you ain't good enough for that. Or when you say, I'm amazing, and the niggle goes, no, you ain't. It's basically right. saying what you've just told yourself doesn't fit in your belief structure. You just lied to yourself. And even though consciously you know you are, unconsciously, you feel child guilt inside. brings you forward. Yeah, you can feel guilt. You can Because you know you're anger. not telling yourself the truth. Yeah, well, you say, and you can feel guilt. What you're really saying is, I know that I feel guilt when I do it. That's what you're really saying. Right. And that's okay to own it, because it doesn't matter if anybody else, if nobody else on the planet does it, mate. You do it. That makes it important to you. So don't matter. You don't have to include everybody else. Um, your happiness, joy, whatever it is that you um, aim to, to have as an emotion, because everything has an, an emotional attachment. I was talking about people that join the gym. Nobody joins the gym to get bigger, stronger, smaller, thinner. There's always an emotional attachment. Whatever your emotional attachment it could be success, it could be joy, it could be happiness, but ultimately there will be an emotional attachment. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to find it. We're going to create, choose happiness. We're going to find it. We're going to notice what you've already got. You haven't fully recognized. And we're going to create it. We're going to make things make you feel joy and happiness. When I empty my laundry bin, get all my laundry done, I feel amazing. Like, right. really amazing. You get and up, you make your bed, you feel good. 
Yeah, because why not? Because we do the opposite, don't we? If I don't make my bed, if I don't look good, if nobody says hello to me, I'll make myself feel terrible. So I'm going the other way today because I'm going right. to make myself feel amazing because why not? I'm not comparing myself to other people. I'm not doing this and then saying I'm better than you. No, I just feel good in myself. And that's what a lot of people will say to me too. Like, I like to dress. Like, fashion, I love fashion. I'm from New York, so, like, I grew up in the city. So, like, a lot of people, even if I'm going to the gas station, for example, go to the gas station to get a snack. I'll dress nice and people be like, oh, where are you going? I'm like, I'm just going outside to the gas station. They'll be asking me, oh, why are you, why are you dressing like that for? And I'm like, because I want to feel good about myself. I don't want to go outside. I mean, you know, I'm... Let me, let me, that's that's amazing. I don't want to go out looking bummy. Let me ask you, let me ask you, when you can't do that and you don't do that, does that make you feel the opposite about yourself? It makes me you feel, feel shitty. Bad? Yeah. Right, well, that's where we need to disconnect because that's where you're not just doing it because you want to because it makes you feel good. You're doing it because you don't want to feel that way. Right. So actually, we want to disconnect from that and do it when you want. You will still do it, but because you want to, not because you're fearful if you don't. Right. Now, I, it's it's not like an ego thing, but, you know, I just, no. I would want to always, I would always want to be dressing nice. You want to just feel not good. You want to just feel, myself. You want to feel good enough which is what you weren't made to feel when you were a child. So you've attached it to Yeah, because I, I, didn't, I didn't have Korea. the type of clothes I had yeah. back then. Right? Yeah. It's a, for you, it's a measure of whether right. I'm good enough or not. What do I look, what I look like, how successful I am in my job, they're all measures to whether you're good enough or not. But ultimately, that's your choice. But because they aren't actually measures for you as a person, they'll never be enough on their own. Right. So we're going to make sure that we solve that issue, detach it emotionally and all this stuff. You will continue to do it because that's what you do, but you'll do it because you want to, not because you're fearful if you don't. Right. Well spoken. And on that note, I'm going to go. Let's <laughs> I get was nice one. I've got a video call, not a live, but I've, I've, I've enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> well, it was nice talking with you and thank you for the advice and tips that you gave me. Thank you for giving me new learning strategies that I can now pick up on and make it a consistent thing for myself on a daily. So I know what not to do and what I can do to better myself the next time a situation like yep. that. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for allowing me to help you because it's my blessing to be able to do that. But notice, even though I've given you suggestions, believe in yourself, you will know what to do in the moment. It might be something I've suggested. It might not be trust yourself you will know what to do in the moment even if it's a will can you help me you'll be all right okay okay thank you for your time and this will not be the last time we chat we're going to be speaking more consistently. Better not be. <laughs> most definitely thank right, you for your brother. Time. thank you so much thank you i'll see you soon no Bye. problem thank you will guys that was a nice conversation that i had with will appreciate you will for having the time to chat with me. I've learned some new things about myself in the matter of maybe an hour. We spoke for an hour, maybe. Yeah, so I'm going to take these strategies, and I hope everybody watching this live took what me and him were saying, and maybe you guys can relate to both of our situations. You can relate to my situation, or someone you know can relate to your situation that you heard us talking about. Yeah, Will is, Will is that guy, bro. Will is that guy. If you guys do not already follow me, please make sure you guys follow me because I will be having more conversations like this with Will and other people. Like Will said, just do not live in a life full of grief. You know what you want in life, so you have to write it down and accomplish it. Everybody has potential that's watching this live right here. So do not forget about yourself. Always have high value and high self-confidence about yourself. You can't let no one tell you you can't do something. You're the only person that can tell yourself if you're capable of doing it or if you can't do it at the moment. But just know that you can get whatever you want in life done. All you have to do is sit down with yourself, meditate, and pull time towards you. Appreciate everybody that's following me right now. Everybody that does follow me, I will comment and like your pictures. 
I will tune into what you guys going on. If you guys need somebody to talk to, I'm here. You know, my DMs is open. I'm not bougie. <laughs> I might look bougie, but I'm not bougie. I'm a good person. So, like, appreciate everybody. Thank you for watching this live. I'm finna get off. I'm finna go on TikTok. So, much love to everybody. Appreciate everybody that tuned in to listen to me and Will's conversation. I hope you guys take this into consideration and get some knowledge from it because I got some knowledge from it. So, yeah.